Welcome back, Patriots. This is Mr. Love, also known as the Math Patriot, bringing you guys another fun and exciting lesson in the world of high school geometry. Now, we are taking this entire service area and volume unit and condensing it down to just two lessons. So, um, honestly, we're not even going to mess with surface area. I should have taken that out. But we are just doing volumes of pyramids and cones. One less shape to do today than we did last time because we threw in spheres. And that makes this going to be a pretty simple lesson. So volume of a pyramid. Now, this is an interesting formula. One third area of the base times the height. Here's what I think is interesting about it. If I was to take a prism, and forgive me, my prisms are not the best. If I was to take that prism and fill it with water, okay, and I'm going to draw this highlight this down here in orange and I'm going to make the height of this thing green okay now I'm taking that guy and I am filling him to the brim with water there's my water there okay and then if I was to take a a rectangle with the exact same base. I'm going to do that in orange. And from that, go to the center and draw up the exact same height. Let's see if I can make a pyramid that actually looks like a pyramid here. Boop. Okay. So same base, same height, and then start pouring I have multiples of these so boop, 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 sh, sh, sh. okay if i was to take the water in this prism that has the same base and height as all the others it would fill exactly three of those pyramids which doesn't it, it, it feels wrong, but it's actually completely true. Um, if we were actually in our classroom, I would have a nice little demonstration to show this to you, that the water of a, of a prism fills exactly three pyramids with the same base and height. Now, therefore, our volume is just one-third area of the base times the height, and that works for both right pyramids and oblique pyramids. I don't remember if I threw out that word last time, but oblique means it's just not centered. We're looking at true height there, not slant height, and that's it. Okay, so find the volume of the square pyramid. Volume is one third area of the base times the height. The hardest part of this entire thing is just keeping track of all of your variables. Height here is 7 inches. Area of the base we're going to have to calculate, and it is a square, so we can just do length times width. They're both 3. That's just 3 times 3, so area of the base is 9. Now we take that and throw it into our formula. Over here on the left, volume is one third times area of the base is nine, height is seven, and you can type that in the calculator if you want to. You're gonna get 21 inches cubed, and that is not some sort of amazing feat of mental math. One third times nine is three, and then three times seven is 21. So find your height, find the area of the base, then plug those both in over here and you've got your volume. It becomes a little bit more difficult whenever this down here is not a square, but we'll do a few examples just to get through. Find the volume of this pyramid. Now, we're gonna look at this bottom shape down here. This bottom shape looks like it is a right triangle. And so, when we go to calculate the area of the base, we're going to need to do area formula for triangle, one half base times height. And now, remember, we have to use a perpendicular set of lines for the base and the height. So I cannot use this 10. The 10 is the hypotenuse. I'm going to have to come over and calculate that other side because this side down here 
is going to be the height of the triangle. Remember, just like with, with the prisms, we have to keep track of height of a triangle, height of a trapezoid, etc., versus height of the prism. So we're talking about just this triangle right now. We need to find that third side. So we need to use Pythagorean theorem. We're going to use b squared. I guess it should be 6 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. 36 is 6 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared is 100. Now let's subtract that 36 from both sides. Gives me 64. And then square root both sides, square root of 64 is 8. So jumping back over here to that area calculation on the right, that's 1 half times base is going to be 8 times the height of the triangle, which we're going to use, if this was my base right here, then this side, the 6, is going to be my height. Then 1 half times 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24 feet squared. Awesome. I've got the area of my base. Now I'm going to jump over to the left and do volume of the pyramid, which is 1 third times area of the base times the height of the prism, which in, I'm sorry, height of the pyramid, which is this distance, and that is 15. So let's plug in what we know. Area of the base was 24. Height is 15. So, one third times 24 times 15, 120 feet cubed. A little bit more difficult because we had to calculate that extra side of the pyramid and then move on from there. All right, volume of a cone, which I am calling the circular pyramid, still works the exact same way. Our volume formula for the pyramid was area of the base times the height, but this area of the base for a cone is just pi r squared, which is where we get, here's pi r squared, here's pi r squared. That's what that b is. So exact same idea. We can use that for right cones or oblique cones, and it works out virtually the same way. I'm going to use this formula, though, because it's more direct. So volume equals one-third pi r squared h. Looks like I've got my radius of 5. Looks like I've got my height of 12. So I can go straight to the formula. 1 third times pi times 5 squared times 12. 1 third times pi times 5 squared times 12. 314.1. Hey, that is 100 times pi. That's nice. Oh, yeah. The reason for that is when I look at everything besides that pi, 1 third times 5 squared times 12. Well, 1 third times 12 is 4. And then 5 squared is 25, which is 100. And then 100 times pi is 314.2. Okay, anyway, that is inches squared. All right. Find the volume of the oblique cone to the nearest tenth. So this works for oblique cones and oblique pyramids. What we want to do is make sure that we have the true height, which is perpendicular to the base. And since I see this right angle down here, yes, that is a, a true height. So here my height equals 25. My radius is still 9.1. So volume equals 1 third pi r squared h. 
1 third pi times 9.1 squared times 25. 1 third times pi times 9.1 squared. Ooh, man. I'm just going to start this over. I somehow got that messed up. One third times pi times 9.1 squared times 25. 2,167.96, so that will actually, that point 0.9 will actually make that round up to 2,198.0 feet cubed. Ooh, I made a mistake on the previous problem. That should have been in inches cubed. Sorry about that. All right, that's it for today. Nothing major. Use your radius. Use your height. Area of the base is the hardest part to keep track of on all this, but overall, not too difficult. Um, that's it for today. As always, guys, stay patriotic.